The situation has evolved throughout the day. What was initially reported as a set of uh, explosions in electrical transformers has clearly evolved into a terrorist attacks across London. This, what has been targeted have been London's underground, its subway, the uh, London underground system has been shut down. We also know that there was at least one explosion on board a double-decker bus in central London. Eyewitnesses telling us that as they walked past the bus just about uh, four hours ago now, there was an explosion on on board, they turned their head, they saw the top coming off the bus. When Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge raised the terror alert level on certain financial buildings in New York, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. last summer, he cited intelligence that was very specific and very alarming. But there is new information that maybe those areas weren't the true target. It turns out, while much of the alarm at the time was about the uh, casing of these uh, financial buildings in New York, Washington, and Newark, New Jersey, there was an actual active Al-Qaeda plot on involving um, some of the characters who did that casing, but they weren't plotting to attack New York, New Jersey, or Washington. They weren't plotting to attack anything in the United States at all. The active plot involved a big bomb attack in London. The ring that was at the center of that, which was headed by suspect Iran Birot, otherwise uh, known as Esam al-Hindi, was smashed back a few months ago. They are now incarcerated, but the original intelligence seems to have been off the mark about what their aim and goal was. There has been a bit of alarm among U.S. agents stationed in Britain. In fact, FBI agents were so spooked by some of this intelligence that they have been reluctant to take the London Underground. They've been taking taxis rather than the subways because apparently the underground was supposed to be part of the plot. ...reiterated the promise that when we have specific credible information, that we will share it. Now, this afternoon, we do have new and unusually specific information about where al-Qaeda would like to attack. Reports indicate that al-Qaeda is targeting Citigroup buildings and the New York Stock Exchange in New York. We must understand that the kind of information available to us today is the result of the president's leadership in the war against terror. The reports that have led to this alert are the result of offensive intelligence and military operations overseas, as well as strong partnerships with our allies around the world, such as Pakistan. Pakistani intelligence sources are accusing the Bush administration of undermining its fight against al-Qaeda by revealing Khan's name while he was still working as an undercover double agent. Unnamed U.S. officials leaked his name to the press in an attempt of the Bush administration to defend last week's heightened terror threat level. A big break came in the uh, al-Qaeda investigation in Pakistan in June. Mohammed Naim Noor Khan, who was living in Lahore and was a computer whiz, arrested on July 13th. But he was willing to begin informing on al-Qaeda and to keep his correspondence on the line. It was from his computer files that the U.S. learned that there had been a plot against U.S. financial institutions. The decision was made uh, by the Bush White House to release this information and Tom Ridge came out on Sunday, August 1st, and announced there was such a plot and there would be extra security for those institutions. In the course of the off-the-record briefing the Homeland Security did for the press, a Bush administration official mentioned that the information had come from Mohammed Naim Noor Khan. Now, he was still a double agent and was undercover and was sending email messages on Sunday and the following Monday to his al-Qaeda contacts in London, who still thought he was on the inside. The next day, the New York Times printed the name and as a principle that you don't tell the press things you don't want to see in the newspapers. That caused a big furor in Pakistan and the United Kingdom where there were ongoing sting operations being run through Khan. And the British had to swoop in and arrest 13 of Khan's correspondents lest they scatter once they heard he had been arrested. And in fact, they lost five of them. And many they're going to have to release for lack of evidence. So the cases hadn't been made. And Vessel saw Salah Hayat, uh, who is the Pakistani interior minister, is just furious, and he said that, you know, Khan is the kind of asset that could eventually have led to bin Laden himself had he not been outed. It's very clear from the reaction in Britain that they are very upset. Uh, MI5 actually has given an interview to the New York Times in which they have complained about the damage that was done to the ongoing cases. Condi Rice admitted that the name had been, in fact, 
provided to the press on background. And then she said she didn't know if he was a double agent. And Home Secretary uh, David Blunkett, in an op-ed criticizing uh, the Bush administration for having done this, because his name was revealed in the press, they have no choice but to attempt to arrest these people. In many instances, they may not actually have enough evidence against them to hold them, because being an email contact with Mohammed Naim Nurkhan is not a crime. We now know that the information was very old, that it is often said by the Bush administration officials that it had been updated as recently as January of 2004, but The Guardian has revealed that what they really mean is the file had been opened as recently as January 2004. No new information was added to it. We don't have evidence of ongoing operational activities. So it's old information, and they dried up this potentially very rich well of further tracking and information. Might have led to bin Laden himself, might have led to a very severe crippling of al-Qaeda operational capabilities, might have led to successful court cases against a whole range of operatives in London and elsewhere.